And hello again. This time we're going to be looking at how we can use the derivative and uh, the curves and, and, and see if we can maximize the area, in this case, of a rectangle. Here's the, the problem, the way it looks. We have this triangle in front of us, a rectangle, sorry, and we're supposed to maximize the area. And what that will mean is we're going to choose an x, and that's the same x there, that when we multiply those two sides together, we will end up with the maximum area. Now, there are some things to consider uh, before we do anything else, just so that we know where the limits of this are. In other words, x, it can't be 0, and it certainly can't be negative. So it does have to have a positive uh, size, and it has to be greater than 0. Uh, for this one here, right there, if we consider that, well, OK, 9 is always 9, but what happens when x comes up to 3? Well, 3 times 3 is 9. So we're limited to between something greater than 0 but less than 3. Because as soon as you hit 3, uh, that side disappears. So knowing that, we can do some analysis here. The first thing we need to do is create an equation that allows us to see the area. So let's do that. As you know, areas of a rectangle are the, the base side and the other side. And here I've, I went ahead and put them together, and this is the one that we'll be using, a standard second degree function. So let's go on to the next page. I've told the computer to draw the curve that this second degree function is, and here it comes. Okay. Now you can see from what we thought of earlier is we can see that the function will go into the negative territory as soon as we go to the left of x equals 0 and goes into the negative territory to the right of 3. And of course, those are the 0 points. And that, that makes sense for us. We, we want an actual real area. We don't want to go into anything negative. Nobody measures rooms and say, I have negative 50 square meters in my apartment. So here we go. Now we can take the next step. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a bit of a cold. All right. As per usual, we need to take the derivative, and that, that's what we've done. And because the first function was second degree, it's very easy to do. Now, I've done that in, in blue, just so we can keep them separate in our mind. Now, with derivatives, we, we're always talking about tangents and areas that are either a tangent that is positive, negative, or in some cases flat, where we get zero. And we'll be using that. Uh, in fact, we need it. It's absolutely essential. So we need to find the place that gives us a zero k value for the tangent. And you may ask yourself, well, well why is that? Well, if you look at the curve, you can see that the area increases until you get to a certain point. This is the maximum area. That's our extreme point. And we'll get that from analyzing this. And we need to make it 0 to do that. So here we go. The tangent line I've made purple. And here we're saying, OK, we're looking for the place where the first derivative is 0. So let's just make it 0. We take this, and we say it is 0. What x makes that true? So that's our next little problem. Uh, some of you will see it instantly, and you'll see that, well, 1 and a half would do it, uh, because here we have 6 times something will be as large as 9. So that's, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you don't follow, just pause it un until you get it. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. OK, next. When we have that x, we need to see uh, what the y part is. So 
let's that's what I'm doing up here. I, I needed some room, so I took away the graph. I prefer fractions. Um, some of you still have some difficulty with fractions, so that's why I'm doing it so that you can get used to it. All right. I hope you guys can follow along. Here we go. I'm just cleaning it up. I'm just doing some standard math A stuff here. So hopefully it's not too complicated. And here we go. It was just pretty straightforward. There we go. That is what the answer is. That is the maximum area that this can have. Now, one quick look back. Let's just go back to the graph again real fast where the tangent was. Here we go. Here you can see that the 6 and 3 quarters is the intercept point right there on the y. And the y-axis here is what the area is giving us. Hope that makes sense for you. So we found the zero spot, and that, that's right here. That's where the tangent is zero. You can also see from the curve that the highest point of the curve, which represents the area, goes through right there. And that is what we got right there. All right. See you next time.